You can run a grapple, a hydraulic angling blade on the front, something on the back like a top or a tilt kit. Adding this function on there opens up a world of versatility. So if you've got 90 minutes of time on your hand, you could save yourself a thousand bucks. Guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Going to be installing the Summit Hydraulics Diverter Kit on the 1025R today. If I can do this, anybody can do it. I'm telling you, I am not a mechanical, electrical, nothing of that inclined kind of guy. I just want to get this thing installed on my tractor because I'm really excited for there to be a low cost solution to add on an additional hydraulic function to your tractor. It's something a lot of guys are looking for. There's just not a lot of options out there. and I want to do this and show you the trials and errors of getting it installed. That way you can see it's, it's nothing to be scared of. We can figure it out together. Summit Hydraulics has been great to work with and I have any questions even about the parts in here or kind of the planning part of it as I go through the instructions. I haven't done it, but I've gone through the instructions to try to have an idea of how to put it all together. So here we go. If you haven't checked out the overview video going over what's included, all the parts and pieces, components in this kit right here, check it out. There's gonna be a link above, I don't know, somewhere up here where you should take a quick look at that. We're not gonna dive into that today. We're just gonna get right to the installation. One of the great things about these guys over at Summit is this is the original set of instructions that I printed off that were uh, emailed over to me. I've had some questions when I went through it. They had already updated and revised their instructions. They're all about continuous improvement. They're really looking for feedback from customers and, and for myself as well on like hose lengths. Do the instructions make sense? What can they do to improve? So it's one of those companies that is really looking to innovate and just get better over time. I love working with companies like that. And if you like what you see here, would you consider giving me a thumbs up right down below? There's not a thumbs down. Just it's right down below that way. And also hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. A lot of helpful videos get posted on here. At least I try to be helpful. And if you wanna get information on this Summit Hydraulics Kit or anything else cool for your tractor, read that description below. You'll find a link there. You can also get 5% off with code GWT at Summit Hydraulics. This is my 2018 1025R. You're gonna see this handle on here right now. This is part of the electric um, kit that I have installed for a grapple up front, the WorkSaver grapple. I'm gonna try this year, the hydraulic version of that, now that there is a cheap alternative. The electric version you can get for about $2,000 from WorkSaver through me. It contains everything you need, the wiring harness, the control, the grapple, of course, itself. The hydraulic version is about $1,500. Prices fluctuate over time, so depending on when you're watching this video, the price might have gone up, probably hasn't gone down. But what you need to have if you're gonna run a hydraulic grapple are gonna be additional hydraulics. You've got the standard loader hydraulics that are already on there to raise and lower your loader and to, uh, to curl and roll your bucket. However, if you wanna open and close the jaws of a grapple, you gotta have a third function. That's where something like this diverter kit comes into play. So as you can see, this is all that's included. It's really not that much if you take a look at it. You have some hoses. These are little covers for your outlets. You got the, uh, really, just the hydraulic portion of it here uh, where you just mount it to your, your loader arm and a little bit of electrical too, which nothing really to be scared of. Okay, so the first step here is just gonna be to turn your tractor off, of course. Uh, move this joystick here to relieve any built up pressure that could be in the hydraulic system. Basically, we're gonna be separating the lines that are on here and then installing those new lines because we're going to be diverting flow from one direction to another at the push of a button, basically. So we just gotta get it set up and oriented correctly. So what we're gonna be doing is disconnecting the hydraulic lines tied into this cylinder right here. It's gonna be called a tilt cylinder. It's gonna have it tilt back or forward there, basically the curl or dump. So if you even just trace these lines right here, you can see this one is gonna be your top hard line. And then if you look closely, probably hard to see, but not the top of the next line down is gonna be the other end right here. So it's gonna be our top two lines. We trace them all the way up here. We're gonna have to pull them out of this little retainer bracket that's right here. And then we're gonna be disconnecting um, at this point right here, I believe, on both fittings. So if you think about it, the reason we're disconnecting, we're gonna be actually not reusing this section of flexible hose at all, is we're gonna put a kit right in the middle. So we're gonna have two shorter hoses, one on either end that kind of fit in the middle and replace this old section of hose. One. There we go. Well, not much fluid at all. 
wasn't expecting that. Okay. Okay, so we need to disconnect the other end at the quick coupler side down here uh, for these same two hoses. And I never noticed it before because it's always covered up in the sheath, but these are actually color coded right up here as well. So it should make it easier for you to make sure you're disconnecting the right hoses down below. But we have yellow and black, so I'm just gonna disconnect those two down here. We should be good to go. And surprisingly, the only hydraulic fluid that's come out are these few little drops right here. Nothing else has come out at all. There's not a drop, I don't think, in the bucket right now. These are the rubber hoses here that we've removed, and as far as I can tell, there's gonna be no need to reuse these. So maybe just hang on to them for extras for some time down the road. Okay, so this is our diverter kit body right here with a solenoid on top. This is gonna get mounted to the inside of the rail, but basically you're gonna have incoming flow right here okay so instead of just going right directly to the curl roll function on your loader cylinder it's going to come in here and in normal operation mode it's just going to pass right through and continue on to the curl roll function however if you trigger this solenoid by pushing the button or pushing and holding the button it's going to redirect that flow instead of going straight through it's going to take a 90 degree turn right here and then continue down these hoses to your uh, grapple open and close function or a hydraulic angling blade whatever else you might have uh, attached to the other end of these hoses this is going to clamp right to this section here but over on this side where you can't see it very well you're going to just going to tighten it down you can see the little groove in these uh, clamps here you're going to tighten it down it's going to squeeze and hold in place on there uh, so it's not to over tighten or get it too firm right now as this will need to be adjusted after we get hoses connected to it to kind of get the proper seating and position for it. Just to point out their continuous improvement, they're actually already completing some of these steps ahead of time, which these are the old instructions again. It's telling you to put the adapters into the, uh, the valve body, but this has actually already been done, came right from um, Summit Hydraulics with this already installed. Same thing with a little magnetic uh, protective sheath on the back of the valve body it's already been done as well so you can see they're actually doing a little bit more than they even used to do in the instructions making it even easier okay so we've got three sets of hoses this is going to be the middle set as far as length goes uh, one of the things i'll pass along to them is just to try to label the hoses um, our set wasn't labeled i don't know if the other sets in the future are going to be labeled or not but then we're gonna be putting these fittings on the end right there. This is gonna be what attaches or connects to the quick coupler, the male end that goes into the quick coupler on your tractor hydraulic system. And then really quick, we're gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the covers on there, uh, one on either end, so they are marked and ready to go. And if yellow holds true right here, we're gonna make the top hose that's feeding everything through uh, corresponding yellow, and then the second one down will be black. So part of the reason you wanna keep these fittings loose, just hand tight right now, is because once you get everything situated and lined up, you can kind of sort it out the right angle and then tighten it down to fit them in. Kind of adjust that to the right angle there where you think you might have it. Kind of hand tighten that down. Didn't wanna do that. Why is that not, there we go. Adjust height of diverter valve up and down until hoses flow naturally and match photo above. Tighten valve clamps only until it firmly holds in place. Do not over tighten. Adjust 45 degree fitting. Once satisfied, fasten new hoses to existing hose group with zip ties. Okay, so we've got those hoses tied into the quick couplers now. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and snug this up. I can always loosen a little bit later on if I need to and make some more fine-tuned adjustments, but so far, I can't see any need for that. Okay, so now we are on the next step here, putting the short hose from the valve body we've installed and reconnecting to the hard lines here on the tilt cylinder. 
So there's a couple ways you can go about this just depending on how your setup is configured. You may have a 90 degree fitting on there, you may have a straight fitting. Same thing on the other end right here of the connection, 90 degree or a straight fitting. In our case, they've included a couple of step ups that we need to put on the 90 degree end. Okay, so we're gonna have it situated like this, right up here, but we're gonna step up. We'll thread this right into, uh, into this guy here, and then this will thread right onto here. So really quick, you can see this uh, nut right here that holds the bracket in place. The flange of it actually just hangs over the slot just enough to make it difficult. And you can actually feel a little bit of a, a burr almost on there um, where it's, it's scraped going by. So I'm gonna take this nut out, put the fitting in, and then put the nut back in. I would say if anything, Access is the uh, the biggest challenge. I don't have regular wrenches large enough to get back in here, so using channel locks and making do, which is not ideal. We're gonna have to pop off the side panel here uh, to get to some electrical uh, fuse box later on. I'm gonna take it off right now to see if we can free up a little bit of extra room in there to get things tightened down. And for the record, after we do a video with different grapple options in the future, I'm gonna be taking the uh, electrical wiring harness out of here. This gray cable is actually for the sweep all sweepster. I've done some videos on that too. Um, it has an electric dump option on it, so that's what this is for. I may keep it on here, I may take it off. They just both tie into the battery terminals, no big deal. Time to put the, the longest set of hoses on. These are the ones that are gonna run from the loader or from the diverter uh, valve that's on here up and down the loader arm and then mounted kind of on the front middle rail of your loader assembly. Okay, so the last hydraulic step here, um, besides tightening everything down, is gonna be putting the connector up here on the loader arm that you can see right down here, okay? And then you're gonna tie in the, uh, the quick couplers right on there, everything will be ready and in place to hook up the other business end of your grapple or your plow kit, the hydraulic kit right in here, and you'll be good to go. So I had a position right here, but after I've kind of started to play around for a little bit, if I have these hoses installed right here, you can see how they're gonna hang back and I could put a zip tie kind of like this, but I think what I'm gonna do is shift uh, this over to this side somewhere and that way I can kind of have the hoses a little bit tighter, zip time there, and then they'll be connected right here as well and just not have as much play out here. And again, we're gonna give feedback to Summit. They are trying to custom make these kits to fit individual tractors so they all fit a little bit better instead of having a universal kit that's kind of a one size fits all, just a little bit more tailor-made and form-fitting. So it's just an evolution. Things are gonna continuously improve. I'm gonna go ahead and take off the electrical control. Oh, well, maybe I can just slide it down actually, look at that. That way we can have easier access. We need to take this ball. I've never actually taken one of these off. Supposedly it just unscrews. I think you're gonna have to use <clears throat> quite a bit of force. I'm not sure how, uh, what the best way is to get this thing off of here. <clears throat> I wonder if I wrap this, there we go. Okay, so this is how the, uh, the harness comes on uh, mounted to the joystick right here. We're gonna snip this off. Honestly, I'm not sure if I should leave this inline fuse in or not. 
because this is going to be plugged into the fuse uh, panel as it is. I'm not sure. We're going to try it like that. I guess we can also we can always just cut it out and resplice it if we need to. I am not uh, an electrician by any means, but I'm going to snip this end off here, crimp this connector on, and we're going to end up plugging this right into the fuse panel. solid. In this step here we are going to be taking and installing the uh, the joystick onto uh, the loader joystick here and then we have to connect it to the fuse panel. So I've just quickly and easily removed the side panel. You can see the fuse block that's right here. You want to connect it to, uh, at least on mine, take a look and check out your diagram either in the manual or we found it on the back side of our side panel. The second from the top right here, the ignition run power I think it was called. Um, that way it's only gonna be active, the solenoid power will be active only when the key is turned on. So if you have your tractor turned off, it's not gonna put a drain on the battery. Doesn't even look like it'll fit down there. Gotta keep it going over. then you would be able to. Okay, so I'm gonna loosen up this bushing just a hair to rotate uh, everything forward, or maybe I can, maybe I can tighten it down a little bit more. I don't think I can though. <clears throat> yeah, maybe I can get it. Nope, I am rotating the entire stick down there. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up just a hair. Oh, that's not good. Now I've loosened up something down below here. Probably wasn't supposed to. Actually, that's kind of all worked out. Okay, so now is the electrical installation. We've got the joystick um, handle replacing the ball that was on there. Routed the wiring harness kind of underneath here. I'm, you know, probably gonna have to figure out how to secure the extra wiring that we have. Of course, I've got this other cabling again, that'll be gone. This is for a totally separate system. Um, most of this will hide behind the side panel here. Again, we've put the, uh, the red cable, the power side here into it, the fuse block with its own separate fuse. We are keeping the inline fuse on there at this particular time. I don't know, you guys can tell me or someone can tell me if we need to take that out. And then we've tied off to uh, the ground inside the engine block compartment here, which was pretty easy to do. I mean, it was readily accessible with an extension on the socket right here and knocked it out in just a couple of minutes. This right here is the electrical connector that is gonna go on the solenoid right here on our, uh, our valve body. And you can see the other end of it right here is gonna be your disconnect. So when you take your loader off, you can disconnect this side from, where's it at? <clears throat> right down here. And for the record, I may have missed a step and potentially should have done this earlier. You'll see there's a three prong outlet right here. This is gonna only install one direction so you can't really mess that up. Go ahead and get it on there and then we'll secure it. with a screw. Okay, now it is time for the moment of truth. My biggest concern is if I tightened all the fittings enough. Uh, so we'll see if we have any leaks hydraulically on there. The next big test for it after that will be actually hooking up a grapple to it, which we're gonna cover in a future video.
Okay, so I noticed a couple of leaks, nothing crazy, but we do have a drip up there and then uh, one near the valve housing as well. I can't see down below, but we're gonna address these couple that we see right now. Get a little bit right there too. Okay, well we've got everything installed now on here, both hydraulically, electrically, clamped up front, ready to hook up to a grapple. That's gonna be what I tried to test it out with. That's gonna be coming in another video pretty soon. I'm gonna do a, an ultimate grapple guide, anything from the electric grapple to the mini hydraulic grapple, the big ones for like the 4066R and also the brush crusher as well. So you can kind of see everything side by side and the different options, relative price points and all that kind of information. So make sure you stick around for that. Hey, a few quick notes about final installation that I wanted to make sure got into this video. On the diverter valve, the setup that you have here for hoses, I assumed incorrectly, because I didn't read the manual close enough, that you just take the hoses from the quick couplers right here and pop them right into the close side ports. So these lines that you plug in to the quick couplers right here don't tie in right here. They actually tie in over where my hand is on this side right here. And so then these hoses right here that plug into the close side of the diverter valve actually wrap around and they're gonna die in right here and connect to your hard lines. And of course that third function still comes out the front side kind of towards the uh, side panel of the, the hood here and then run all the way up front, nothing changed there. So a couple nice things that I've noticed here from the operator station, even though we don't have a grapple or something tied into that third function or that diverter, you're gonna actually have a visual indicator. There's a red LED that comes on that you can easily see right from here in the operator station to know that once you're pulling this trigger and turning it on, you know when it's engaged. And even when I have the tractor on and nothing's hooked up, you can actually see uh, these extra lines pulsating a little bit to know that that flow is being diverted from that normal um, curl roll function and instead being redirected through that additional circuit that we've already installed on the tractor. And I do wanna point out right here that this silver bracket is gonna be coming off the tractor. That's for the electric version of the grapple. I just wanna try out the hydraulic now that I have this set up on here, but I'm gonna do a future grapple video kind of comparing a bunch of stuff. So I wanna keep this on there just for the time being, but no, it's not part of uh, the Summit Hydraulics Diverter Kit. Let's talk a little bit about the install experience itself, the time, the tools, that kind of thing. So, you know, we were filming, I was taking emails and phone calls, so it took us four hours to do this, but that was, again, with a lot of interruptions and just trying to change angles and all that kind of stuff for you guys. So I would think, especially if you watch this video and can avoid some of the mistakes that I made, you're looking at probably a 90 minute, maybe a two hour max install. So a couple of hours, really, I think you can have this down. It's, it's not that difficult. As far as tools required, we didn't have a whole lot. We had a couple wrenches, you know, vice grips, a screwdriver, a bucket with rags and sockets too. Uh, yeah, yeah, half inch sockets, that kind of thing. But you know, you're gonna lose a little bit of fluid when you disconnect lines. It really is not that complicated. Um, you may want some extra zip ties as well to kind of secure things off, but it is, it's just not that difficult to do. And I'm, and I'm serious. When I say I can do this, anybody can do it. I am not a John Deere mechanic, didn't grow up learning the trades or anything like that. So it's a, a real DIY installation. And again, this is something that's gonna save you a boatload of money over having a dealer do it. And you can save even more with code GWT to get 5% off your order at Summit Hydraulics. Link below. So again, just a reminder on why you may want an additional function. Again, two hoses or two outlets equals one additional function. You gotta have flow that can go this way and then return back the other way. So you see two outlets, that's one additional function. If you wanna run a grapple, a hydraulic grapple that is, or if you wanna have a hydraulic angling blade on your loader, or I suppose you could even take these hoses and just fish them right to the back side of your machine as well if you wanna run a rear mounted snowblower with a hydraulic angling chute or an angling blade back there. There's a lot of different things you can do uh, by having an additional function like this and it really is a cheap way to go about it. It takes a tractor from a less functional plain Jane and really enhances the versatility and saves you a ton of money over having a dealer do it. So again, this is the install video. Go back and watch that previous video to kind of get a better understanding of the components and what's involved. That'll help save you some time in the long run. And if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right under the video as well. If you found this video helpful, consider giving me a thumbs up real quick and also leave a comment down below, maybe with your experience or questions you have. If I don't have the answer, oftentimes somebody else does. 
If you're looking for where to buy this kit, I'm gonna put it right down in the description underneath the video. There'll be a link, take you right to their website. Don't forget, 5% off with code GWT. And if you need a grapple, a snowblower, a plow blade, something else to go along with that new diverter kit you're installing, go to goodworkstractors.com. We can help you out with that too. Until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.